COFO 26 was intensive so that the dialogue with the statutory bodies needed to be downscaled to written documentation only. So in that perspective, what were really the major takeaway for our working group? Now, our working group have a role for catalyzing needed integration of trees and forest with agroforestry and livestock in drylands and rangelands. So in our perspective, it was encouraging to hear key speakers and to see the meeting documentation underlying the need for integration in a broad perspective for climate adaptation, for forest and landscape restoration, biodiversity, ecosystem services, as well as for social and economic transition. Coming then to what are our main priorities and achievements, we welcome the COFO 26 directive to us to support the preparations for the UN International Year of Rangelands and Pastoralists in 2026. Indeed, this is already in our work plan for 2022 to 24, and the first step dialogue for this is already started. The current work plan address four main points. Firstly, the transformation of dryland forests and agro silvo pastoral production systems. Secondly, in that process to promote innovative ways to monitor and restore drylands. And thirdly, as well, to boost the knowledge documentation and sharing around this. And fourthly, as an outcome, to improve dryland forest-based livelihoods and human well-being in a post-COVID recovery. The work plan emphasize the role of and partnership with other FAO statutory bodies, such as the COAG Subcommittee on Livestock and the Secretariat for the International Year of Rangelands. This is also in line with the UN Decade of Ecosystem Restoration, co-initiated by FAO. We are working hard to raise our presence and have seen an increase in participants. On that note, we also strive for gender and regional representation in our activities. Compared to our first session, in the second session of the work group hosted by Tanzania, country representation increased by 70%. Additionally, on progress and how we continue with with our partner spirit and support, we have published two reports. We have contributed to various restoration initiative programs and projects. And we strongly recognize the role of women in fighting the effects of droughts and climate change. Examples of such engagement include, for example, the FAO South-South platform on We Can. In addition, with the support and big thanks to the Forest and Rangeland and Watershed Organization of the Ministry of Jihad Agriculture in Iran, we are in the process of launching an e-learning program. This is on transformation of dryland production systems under climate change, together with the FAO e-learning academy. We have also engaged 14 interested partners to support this initiative. Uh, we are also uh, partnering with four universities to conduct a summer school program in 2023. This will be during the third session of our work group, which indeed will be conducted in parallel with the Near East Forest and Rangeland Commission meeting to be held in Jordan. Last but not least, we launched the Grazing with Trees assessment at the GLF COFO World Forest Week. In this assessment, our work group served as an advisory committee and provided 17 different cases documenting silvopastoralism for restoration of drylands, where the role of animals and trees could be seen as allies and not as enemies. Just now, we are also teaming up with GLF at the Climate COP in early November for a hybrid panel on drought management upscaling the silvopastoral approach in the Near East and North Africa region. Before closing, I would like to reiterate our partnership with the COEG Subcommittee on Livestock, as well as the Secretariat for International Year of Rangelands. And again, many warm thanks to all our contributors, donors and supporters for our important working group. Thank you.